Hi guys, today we're making this keyboard animation and I'll show you the whole process from start to finish and how to build up a good shot. And it's not that hard to make something that looks professional as long as you know how to do it step by step. And this is what I'm going to show you today. Alright, let's get started. Alright, first so let's find a good keyboard we can use. And I usually use CG Trader because CG Trader has really high quality models and they have a lot of good free ones. So I usually just search for something like keyboard, enable free here, and I click on one I think looks good. I think this one looks good for us now. So let's just click on free download and let's download it. Alright, so download the FBX file here and also make sure to download the textures. And then we also need a nice scene to put the keyboard in. And I think we can use a desktop. So let's just search for desk and do the same thing. Click on free. All right. So for the desktop model, let's download this one. I think this one looks good. Let's just click on free download and download it. All right. So for the desk, let's open the Blender file and we can see here it's a nice scene. Let's just copy everything. Click A, Control C to copy and go back into our project and let's make a collection. Let's call it desk and paste it in here. All right. Perfect. All right. So now let's place our key keyboard on top of this desk. It looks a bit small, so let's scale it up a bit. And to place the keyboard on the surface here, we could try to move it and get it like just right, but it's hard to get it perfect, like perfect placement. So what I like to do is to click here to enable snapping, click the drop down and choose face and then move it with G and it will snap to the surface. So let's snap it here. I think that looks good. All right, so let's add a camera and let's place it somewhere in the front like this. I think this looks good. Make sure the keyboard is in the center and then go into camera settings down here, press on on viewport display and for the pass passive part out i'm not sure how i pronounce that but yeah <laughs> over here slide this to one this is just to make sure everything around here is black because when we see everything around it's hard to visualize exactly how the shot will look and it's easier to get a good feeling for the composition when we hide this so i always do this and for the focal length i like to use uh, real values that we see on real lenses for this one i want to have it a bit zoomed in so let's do 80 millimeter all right that's perfect let's also put this camera in the scene collection and make sure it's totally in the middle here and now let's get started on the keyboard animation all right so go into edit mode and we need to select every key if you try to box select we would also select what's under so an easy way to do this is to look from the side then go into x-ray mode by clicking here and let's box select this edge and this edge and this edge and all the edges down there and then click ctrl l to select everything now we have selected every key now let's press p to separate and click separate by selection exit edit mode now click the keys and go into edit mode on the keys select every everything with A, click P again, and let's choose separate by loose parts. Now they will be separated into separate objects. And right now, if we try to rotate this key, you see that it doesn't rotate around itself. It rotates around the center of the keyboard and we don't want that. So to make sure it rotates around its own center instead of the keyboard center, go into object, set origin, and origin to center of mass, surface or volume. Let's do surface. All right, nice. Now all of them are rotating correctly. Let's also keep it organized by moving these into its own collection. So make sure all of them are selected go into object go down to collection and click move to collection new collection and let's call this keys and let's also parent all of these to the main keyboard so make sure all of them are selected again hold shift click the main keyboard click ctrl p to parent and press object here now everything will move with the keyboard all right now let's do the actual animation so for that we need to see the timeline or i rather like to use the graph editor so let's open the graph editor here let's go to frame 200 make sure the keyboard is selected press i to add a keyframe let's go to frame zero and let's move the keyboard up a bit maybe rotate it a little bit like this and press i again and this will add a keyframe at the start and if you click play now you can see that it's falling down now it's starting to fall slow and then it's landing very slowly we want it to start faster so let's fix this in the graph editor and before we change these keyframes i like to enable normalize and what this does is to scale all the keyframes to be inside the same range in this case from plus one to minus one and it just makes it easier to edit keyframes like you can see the difference between this disabling it and this here it just looks a bit more like a mess here it's a bit easier to have a good overview so to make the keyboard fall faster in the start let's drag and select all the keyframes at frame zero click s to scale x for the x-axis and click zero now if you play it will start a little bit faster and then slow down let's also select these at end let's scale this up by clicking s x and scale up so that the keyboard will start by falling fast and then land nice and slowly all right so now we're doing the i think the most complicated part of this tutorial but also the coolest part i would say which is to animate all of these keys separately so first of all we need to select all of them and an easy way to do that is to right click our collection called keys and click select objects this will select all of them then let's go to frame 140 while all of 
of them are selected, let's press I to add a keyframe. Let's go to frame zero. If we, for example, try to rotate them now, it will rotate as a unit. We want them to rotate individually. So to do that, go up here, click the drop down, and let's choose individual origins as our transform pivot point. If you rotate now, you can see they will rotate all individually. So what we want to do is to make it look like the keys are falling down and landing on the keyboard. So we want them to start a little bit higher up than the base of the keyboard itself. So to do that, make sure all of them are selected, click G to move, and press Z two times. Times, this will move it on the local c-axis and you will see a lot of blue lines move it up slightly maybe like this press i for a keyframe and now if we press play you can see that it's falling from a little bit higher up but it looks kind of boring it looks kind of static because it still looks like one single unit and what we want to do is to make sure the keys are falling in succession so that instead of falling everything at the same time they're falling kind of one by one and for this we're going to use a free add-on called commotion and you can get it by going into edit preferences clicking on get extensions and let's search for commotion for me it's already installed but you just have to press install then go into add-ons and make sure it's enabled here make sure this is enabled then close it go into click n to open the n menu or you can just click this arrow look for a tab that's called commotion click on this so this is the commotion menu but first we will also add some rotation to the keys so make sure all the keys are selected click shift h to isolate them and let's also add some rotation to this uh, an easy way to do this is to make sure individual origins is still on and select one of the keys, for example, one in the center, and enable proportional editing. You can do that by pressing here or just pressing O. And press this drop down and select random as the proportional editing type. If we now rotate, you will see that it will also rotate the other keys, but with a random offset. So what I usually do is to rotate in a few directions by double clicking R like this. And I think that looks good. Let's also fix the spacebar a little bit so it doesn't intersect. Maybe like move it here and select everything again. Press I to place a new keyframe. And if you press play now, you can see them going from a random rotation to landing nicely and orderly at the end. But now let's do the fun part, which is using commotion. All right, so this is the menu for commotion. So commotion, what it does is that you can select multiple objects with animation and you can choose an offset and it will offset the animation for each object individually. So say that you have two objects, instead of them falling at the same time, if you add a say 10 frame offset, first one of them will fall and then the other one will start 10 frames after. So you will get kind of like a small delay. And if you do this on a larger scale, it can look very cool because you can get some cool animations where a bunch of things are falling in succession. Let's do a simple test here. Make sure everything are selected here. Click offset animation. Now you will see the animation has been offset down here in the graph editor. If you click play now, you will see that they're falling kind of one by one like this. And this is not exactly what we want, but you kind of get the point like how they are getting individually offset. Now it's doing this by sorting by name. And with name, it's a bit hard to control unless you have very organized names. Here they are named kind of random because we just separated them from the main object and Blender just added this number at the end. So for us, let's instead use cursor. What this does is that if you place the cursor with shift and right click, for example, here in the middle, the further a key is from this cursor, the more the animation will be offset. So if we click offset animation now, you will see that it will start falling in the middle and continue outwards. Let's also make this offset one frame instead so it's not as slow. Uh, but in our case, let's place the cursor at the left side and press offset animation. This will make it start falling on the left side and continue towards the right. I think that makes a nice wave-like motion when falling down. But now it looks kind of boring still. It's also moving very, very slowly. So what we could do is to make it fall a little bit faster. So let's disable the proportional editing. Make sure individual origins is on. Or actually, make sure individual origins is on in the graph editor. Select everything. Click S, X to scale on X axis. And now if you look at the graph, it becomes much more steeper. And what this does is that they will fall faster. And I think that creates a nice nice effect where the offset is much more pronounced. I also think we can make the keys start further up. So if you keep everything selected in the search field, search for Z lock. This will filter out only the set location. If we then select the upper keyframes and move them up and down, we will see that it will also move the keys up and down. So let's move these further up. Now we're getting a really nice animation of the keys falling down. Now let's unhide everything with Alt H and let's see how it looks in the shot. I think that looks nice. I think they're falling a little bit too fast. So let's click Ctrl Z to go back to our isolated view and click X here to clear the search. Let's select all the keyframes and let's scale on X axis. So they're falling a little bit smoother and let's play this. Let's see how this looks. Let's scale them up a little bit more. I think I like this kind of motion. I think that looks nice. All right, so now animation is done and our next step is to animate the camera. And I want to use two cameras, one close-up camera and then one total camera that 
we will end with. So let's start by duplicating the camera to make another one. And let's rename this to close up 0 to 70 F. And this is kind of a quick and dirty way of managing cameras. And there's better ways of doing this. And there's also add-ons for this. But for this tutorial, I want to keep it simple. So what this name means is basically the goal of the camera and the frame the camera will be active, which is from 0 to frame 70. And for the other camera, the total, we will just call it total 70 to 200. So this will be active from frame 70 to 200. So let's start with the close-up one. So click the green button to make it active and let's go to frame zero here. And for the focal length, let's make it 120 to zoom in a little bit. And we want to move this camera really close to the keyboard. So let's put it here and press I to add a keyframe. Let's move to frame 70 and let's move the camera down. I think this looks good. Press I again. And if you play now, you will see it will kind of be following the keyboard. But we have a small problem. If you look at the animation, the camera starts slow and it goes fast in the middle and then ends slow. When we have multiple cameras, I like to keep the motion constant. And an easy way to do that is to select all the keyframes, click T and choose linear. This just makes sure that the camera is always in motion. And having the camera in motion at all times really helps when you want to cut between two cameras because then it will feel like the motion is the same even though there's two different cameras. So let's keep it like this and click play. I think this looks good. Let's also go into the total camera by clicking the green camera button here. And for this one, let's go to frame 70. We want it to start a little bit zoomed in, just a little bit. I think this is good enough. Press I to add a keyframe. Let's go to frame 200 and let's move it outwards. By the way, to move it in and out like I'm doing here, I select the camera, press G and I double click Z. Then I can move it inwards and outwards. And I think this is good enough. So let's add another keyframe here. And for this one, we want it to start fast and end slow because we want it to come to a stop at the end. So for this is, let's just select all the first keyframes here click s x to scale it on the x-axis and scale it all the way down so if you play now you'll see that it will zoom out like this and a quick way to preview this is just to select the first camera click play and on frame 70 you just click on the next camera to get just a quick feel of how this cut will look so now we have added some animation to the cameras but we also want to add some rotation and to do that let's go out of the camera and let's place our 3d cursor around the middle of the desk under the keyboard you can do that by holding shift and right clicking so let's place it here then click shift a and let's add a empty let's do the plane axis one this will be what we will parent the camera to so let's drag it into the scene collection and let's select our close-up then control select the empty click control p to parent and let's parent the object now if we look into this camera and rotate the empty you will see it will rotate around the keyboard so let's animate this go to frame zero make sure the empty is selected rotate it maybe like this press i go to frame 70 which is the last frame go to the other side and press I again. And now if you play, we have a nice rotating animation. But there's something I want to change here. Right now it starts slow, it goes fast in the middle and ends slow. But for this one, I want the rotation to start fast, go slow in the middle and then end fast at the end. So to do that, let's select these first keyframes. Click S, X, 0 to scale to 0 on the x-axis. And you do the same one for the last frames. Click S, X, 0 to scale them down on the x-axis. Then let's go to the middle frame, which will be 35. So select all the keyframes, press I and click only select the channels to add a keyframe. And to make this easier, let's actually drag select this keyframe, then click Shift H, which will isolate this keyframe. And now let's select the one in the middle and let's rotate this just a little bit like this. If we click play now, you will see it will start fast and it will rotate slow in the middle. So I like to keep it slightly tilted like this so that it's always in motion, but we see that it slows down. Okay, that looks good. Now let's do the same for the total shot. Let's go into camera on this one and let's also add a new empty. Let's drag this out in scene collection. And actually, let's call this close up parent. This one, let's call it total parent. All right, so click the camera and parent it to the total parent empty. That sounds, <laughs> sounds funny. And now let's add some rotation to this empty. Let's first for this one, go all the way to the end to frame 200 and let's add a key from here while the empty is selected. Then let's go to frame 70, which is the first one of the shot. And let's rotate this quite far to the side. I think this is good enough and add a keyframe. If you play now, it will have a nice rotation, but we want this to start fast because in the last shot, it ends by rotating fast. And therefore we also want to make sure the next shot is starting with a quick rotation just to like keep that momentum going. So let's go into this camera and click the empty. Now let's select all these keyframes at the start. Click S, X, zero to scale to zero. Let's also increase this keyframe with SX and just scale it up like this. I think that's good. And if we play this now, let's make this camera deactive, play, and you will see that it has a nice transition to the next camera. Because we're making the transition 
when the movement is the fastest. All right, perfect. Now we have done all the animation and our next step is to do the lighting and material. And then we're done. So congratulations for getting this far into the tutorial. All right, let's get into it. Let's add a collection. Let's call this lighting. Let's also go to the last frame so we'll see how it ends up. And let's turn on preview render. And we can see that for this model I downloaded, the desk, there's already a light there. We can just keep this. If you're using another scene, you can kind of do whatever you want to make it look good. But you know, it's up to you. But for us, we're going to start by adding a area light like this. And let's move this up. I think, uh, let's move it to the side a little bit. Let's turn off render mode for now. We can also turn on render mode in this corner so that we can see the render here. And let's move this to the side like this, I think. And I like to move it more up. Okay, let's make it much stronger, maybe 50. I think that looks nice. I will keep the lighting pretty basic for this one. And let's go back a little bit. And let's check with the close up too. It's always nice to check with the different perspectives. And I'm seeing a problem here. Um, I think we can make the wall behind here much darker so it doesn't merge with the keyboard color here. So let's make it much darker. Or maybe it's better if it's brighter. Let's go for dark for now. Let's make it maybe 0.1. And the specular, let's turn this down to 0.05. I think that looks good. Let's also add a light behind the keyboard. This is nice to have a nice rim light. So let's add a air light. Let's make this much smaller like this. Let's also make it much weaker, like maybe 0.1. And let's move this behind the keyboard here. You see that now we're getting like a nice gradient here. I don't want to push it too much to the side because then we're losing the gradient. But if you're putting the light just behind here, you will get a nice rim light and a nice gradient here. And I really like having that when lighting a product like this. Maybe we can make it a little bit stronger. Let's do times 1.5. I think that's good. Let's also add another light by duplicating this with Shift D, moving it down. Let's rotate it up and let's make this much weaker. Maybe divide it by three. This is just to have a little nice rim light here too. And normally for animation like this, you light every shot separately because then you have more control. But for this tutorial, we're keeping it simple. So we're using the same lighting setup for both shots. Let's look at how this looks. I think that looks nice. Right, so something I want to do with this desk is to make it white. So let's select the desk here, the wooden part. Let's add a saturation node with shift A. Let's put the saturation to zero to make it white. And let's make the value 0.05. I think that looks good. And let's also make these shelves darker too. I think that looks nice. This will put a bit more focus on the keyboard and not the background. All right, nice. And something I also forgot to mention that we can do is to change the color of these key holders. I made them orange. You can also make them another color if you want. All right, now we're basically done with everything. And the next step is just to render this. So let's do that now. Let's turn off render preview mode. Let's save it, that's important. Let's go into the output. And for this, I'm rendering to PNG. Normally, I recommend rendering to OpenXR because then you have much more control over colors after rendering. However, this requires its own tutorial. I might make one in the future explaining how you color and grade OpenXR files. But for now, let's use PNG because that's very simple. And let's start by rendering the close-up. So make this camera active and for the output, let's make the frame start at 70 because this camera just goes from 0 to 70. Let's call this close up and I also like to add a versioning. So let's do version 1. Save this and let's go into render and render animation. And now we just have to wait for this rendering to end. Let's also render the total shot. Let's make this camera active by clicking the green button. Click on the output and let's change the frame start to 70 and the frame end to 200. Let's also change this to total and save and let's press render for this too. Perfect! Now we just have to wait for the render to finish and then we're done. All right, that's basically it. Congratulations for finishing the tutorial. It was pretty long and it was a lot of steps but you managed to get through and that requires a lot of effort. And it's the first time making a motion design tutorial for Blender on this channel. And if you like this tutorial and want to see more like this, comment below and I will make sure to make more in the future. All right, thanks for watching and see you next time.